grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We come together on this feast day of St Barnabas in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to sing our first hymn, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me say that thou art. Thou my best thought in the day and the night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom, be thou my truth. Therefore let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, bringing them to Jesus in penitence and faith. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out of darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, 
for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. We sing canticle number one, the Jubilate. Sing joyful praises unto the Lord, let all the earth rejoice. Enter his presence, come with a song, sing praises to the Lord. God made us all by his great love, his sheep and flock we are. God poured his grace freely on us, sing praises to the Lord. Sing joyful praises unto the Lord, let all the earth rejoice. Enter his presence, come with a song, sing praises to the Lord. Enter his gates with thankful hearts, enter his courts with praise. Steadfast his love forevermore, his faithfulness is sure. Glory to the Father be, glory to the Son. To the Spirit of God, three and forever one. Let us pray. Bountiful God, giver of all good gifts, who poured your Spirit upon your servant Barnabas and gave him grace to encourage others. Help us by his example to be generous in our judgments and unselfish in our service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, beginning at verse 19. Now those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place over Stephen, travelled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch, and they spoke the word to no one except Jews. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who on coming to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When Barnabas came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced, and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion, for he was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for an entire year they associated with the church and taught a great many people. And it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world. And this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judea. This they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Barnabas, I have to say, is one of my favourite saints. 
I suppose he appeals to me because I can sort of relate to him. For he wasn't a man who went about doing spectacular things. Unlike his comrade St Paul, he doesn't seem to have been a great persuasive preacher. No, Barnabas' vacation in life seems to have been to act as a support, as an encourager. He seems to have been a kind, gentle sort of person, always around in a supportive capacity. Someone who was easy to talk to, who was a good listener, always ready to hear your point of view and ready to act as a, refu as a referee when there were disputes. As St Luke says about him, quote, Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. Barnabas' original name was Joseph. He was a fairly wealthy landowning Jew from Cyprus. He was probably one of those Jews from abroad who were in Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost, who were moved by St Peter's preaching and who were baptised and joined the church, no doubt giving all their wealth to be shared among the community. No doubt Barnabas had heard about Jesus from his young cousin John Mark and his family, who lived in Jerusalem, and whose house became the central meeting place for the early Christian community, and may even have been the very upper room where Jesus shared the Last Supper with his disciples. Joseph, nicknamed Barnabas by the Apostle, which means son of encouragement, rapidly became one of the church's chief missionaries. It seems to me that he had three qualities which were used to great effect. The three qualities are a generosity and warmth of spirit, particularly in his judgments of others. Secondly, the very special ability of discernment or spiritual insight. He had the uncanny ability of knowing what was what. Perhaps this relates to his being a good listener. Thirdly, he seems to have been loved and respected by everyone, a quality which enabled him to act as an ambassador and a go-between. You could say he was the church's first diplomat because he was so universally respected and loved. Here are some examples of Barnabas in action. St Paul, whose name originally of course was Saul, had been a violent persecutor of the early church. After his conversion on the road to Damascus, he arrived in Jerusalem only to discover that the Christians were suspicious of him, thought he was a spy, a double agent. It was Barnabas. Barnabas with his insight and his desire to see the best in everybody, who took Saul under his wing, who introduced him to the apostles and convinced them that Saul was sincere in his allegiance to Christ. He was a changed man. And then unsurprisingly, therefore, it was Barnabas who was sent by the apostles in Jerusalem as their ambassador to Antioch. For they'd come to hear that for the first time, Gentiles had become followers of Jesus and members of the church. The apostles were, to put it mildly, slightly uneasy about this. Barnabas, however, when he arrived in Antioch, was overjoyed to see God at work. When he came and saw the grace of God, says St Luke, he was glad. He wasn't worried because something different was happening, but glad that God was at work. Barnabas, with his usual spiritual insight, saw that here, here in Antioch, was a sphere where the forgotten about Saul could work. 
So he went off to Tarsus to look for Paul, and he introduced him to the church at Antioch. It was Barnabas who went off on the first great missionary journey with St Paul. A journey in which St Paul was to emerge as the leading figure in the growing Gentile church. Now a lesser man than Barnabas would have felt threatened and diminished by Paul's rise in standing. But not Barnabas. He reverts to his supportive encouraging role. Notwithstanding the bust up that happened between him and St Paul about John Mark. The word that's on the tip of my tongue when I think of Barnabas is generosity. Generosity of spirit. He was generous with all that he had. He gave his wealth, his time and his abilities for the service of Christ. And Barnabas was generous in his spirit, generous in his judgment, generous in the way he viewed other people, always looking for the best, trying to build people up, seeking to draw them out being quick to praise and slow to judge. We can learn from Barnabas. Let's allow other people to be themselves. It's so easy, even in church circles, to criticise because people do things in a different way from others. Or to feel hurt because somebody else is getting the praise rather than ourselves. It's easy to refuse to let go of this job or that responsibility rather than letting others have a go. It takes Barnabas' spirit to take, say to someone, OK, have a go at it. And when they make a mess of mistake, when they make a mess of it, to pick them up and encourage them to try again. Barnabas teaches us people learn and grow if they're encouraged and supported. Generosity of spirit is a wonderful gift. It's one of the marks of a Christian. We need it. Let's give thanks for St Barnabas who had it in abundance, though I'm sure he would be the last person to say so. Let's affirm our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Encouraged by our fellowship with Barnabas and all the saints, we make our prayers to the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, your Son calls men and women to leave the past behind them and to follow him as his disciples. Look with mercy upon all Christian people today as we seek to tread the way 
of discipleship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son told his apostles not to be afraid, and at Easter breathed on them his gift of peace. Look with mercy upon the world into which he sent them out, and give it that peace for which it longs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, your Son formed around him a company who were no longer servants, but friends. And he called all those who followed him his brother and sister and mother. Look with mercy upon our families and our friends, and upon the communities in which we share. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, your Son sent out his apostles to preach and to heal. Look with mercy upon all those who yearn to hear the good news of God's love. And renew among your people the gifts of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, your Son promised to those who followed him that they would sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and would share in the eternal banquet of God's kingdom. According to your promise, look with mercy upon all those who have walked with Christ in this life and now pass through death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone. So join us together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray with confidence, as Christ our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's offer ourselves afresh to follow in the way of Christ as we say together. Eternal God and Father, you create us by your power and redeem us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves in love and service to one another and to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the whole household of God. Through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace, peace to those who were near and peace to those who are afar. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We sing our second hymn, The Eternal Gifts of Christ the King. The eternal gifts of Christ the King the Apostles' glory let us sing, and all with hearts of gladness raise you hymns of thankful love and praise. Theirs is the steadfast faith of saints, 
and hope that never yields no offence, and love of Christ in perfect glow that lays the prince of this world low. In them the Father's glory shone, in them the will of God the Son, in them exults the Holy Ghost, through them rejoice the heavenly host. To the Redeemer now we cry, that thou wouldst join to them on high, thy servants who this grace implore forever and God give you grace to share the inheritance of the saints in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ.